Guys, we've all been in a rut. Maybe you're not right now. I have been, but I broke out of it. I wanna show you how I did it and I wanna show you what inspired me to do it. If you're interested, please keep watching. Hey guys, I am back on the diving board. If you watch my um, summer camp video, you've already seen me here. Summer's almost over. We're trying to enjoy the sad little, what I like to call the dregs. Luther wants to get on my lap. Stop. It's my life. As soon as I start talking to you, he has important things that he needs to bark at. Most of them I cannot see. But anyway, see? For real. Anyway, I've mentioned a couple times that I'm I'm kind of in a rut when it comes to color. I end up spinning like turquoise and teal and aqua over and over again, sometimes purple, but I really stick in those what I think of as mermaidy colors a lot lately. And it's probably been six months to a year where I find that I buy and spin those colors over and over and it's been on my mind. So um, last month I was looking through my Pinterest boards and um, I came upon something I pinned a really long time ago and it just like bam hit me out of the blue that I wanted to try to do something in a yarn that was like similar. So um, I'm gonna show you, but first I'm just gonna show you the yarn dog hair on it as usual so this is the yarn um, it's like a probably worsted DK weight and um, I showed some of these combing waste at the end of my last paradise fibers video and also dog hair because dog hair my life has dog hair in it people so um, I actually save my combing waste and I keep it all in one bag and I'm eventually going to make a big bat that's a whole separate thing but anyway I save it and I wanted to show it to you so I'm going to show you how I kind of picked the picture apart picked out the components that I wanted to add in my finished yarn and why and like that Okay, so guys, I wanted to just talk to you really quickly about how I decided to do what I did. So this movie means a lot to me. If you don't know what movie this is from, first of all, I'm sad for you. It's from Gone with the Wind. It is Scarlett's, I like to call it her hussy dress. If you don't know why it's called that, I recommend you get that movie, rent it, stream it, do whatever you have to do. You need to see this movie. Um, and this dress in particular is just a favorite of mine. It's unbelievable. I mean, look at her. Come on, guys. So what I did was look at this picture and I was thinking about the fact that it's really tonal. It's really all basically tones of one color and that could be boring, but it's not because she has like so much texture going on. She's got these gloves. She's got this like gauze tool. I don't know if it's tulle or gauze, you guys, you tell me. I don't know about these kinds of things. There's all velvet in here. These are feathers. There is sparkly stuff. I mean, there is a lot going on for a dress that's basically one color. So it still inspired me and I just wanna take you through the things that I use to make this yarn. And that is the reason I went kind of all tonal colors, but a lot of different textures. So this is what I have picked out to put together to make this yarn. There is some red Angelina. 
This is some red superwash wool that I dyed that also has like multiple colors. That was the first wool I picked out. It's really too light and too red red, but in order to tone it down, I'm gonna blend it with this, which I dyed in kind of a wine color. Um, it is a Merino Cheviot cross and I have already flicked the locks because they were full and I mean full of tiny little burrs but it was worth it and I got a really good bargain on this one and then kind of the piece de resistance I dyed some silk look at that shine can you see it from Kamaj Fiber Arts this is their silk lap and I have dyed three different colors and this one I dyed specifically for this project. I'm gonna have to cut it because the fibers are just too long to blend, but look at it. It's perfect. So this is what I'm gonna be using to create this yarn. I told you what all this stuff is. I just wanted to quickly let you know two things. First of all, these are my normal level of fineness. How do you even say that? Um, indigo hound combs. You've seen me use my extra fine combs before. I really didn't think for this blending that was necessary. However, the second thing is that once again, I overloaded my combs. So please learn from my mistakes. That's why I leave these mistakes in. Two reasons. Because you can learn from them and because I need to stay humble. So let's just say I always have lots and lots of reasons to stay humble. But you can learn from this. Don't overload your combs. I struggled to pull this um, roving off because of the overloaded combs, but also because the silk is quite long, even though it's gorgeous and I wouldn't change a thing, it's worth it. Like just use that hand strength, man, and pull it off because it is so pretty. 